Future Files is brought to you by WWF with support from UNDP. It is no secret that natural forests are getting depleted with each passing day. But remember that these forests harbor many species. However, when they get cut, so do these species, they all disappear. So scientists and researchers have endeavored to make collections of these. Joyce Adokarach is one such person, an ethnobotanist at the Entebbe National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO. She's well vast about the interplay between people and plants. She says that human activity is endangering plant species. This has forced NARO into moving to protect plant genetic resources, such as these fruit trees at botanical gardens. What we do is we conserve especially species that are neglected, that are getting depleted in the wild. For, exa for example, we have this. This is Garcinia buchananai. It is locally known as Insali. I don't know if you've ever heard of Insali, you've ever I've eaten the fruits of Insali. It's a very delicious fruit. A few seedlings of this fruit were extracted from Bukaleba forest situated in Mayuge district. The forest was facing extinction. We also raise some seedlings which we have distributed to the communities because we want them to keep in the community. Mm. Yeah, we want them to, for even our young generations to get them. We have uh, this whole line. This plant's bark is medicinal. It helps treat diarrhea and also doubles as a dewormer. We usually cut and try to prune it to make it look smart, but it gives a, a lot of branches. Yeah, so this is one of the species. We have another species the other side, okay. which is the Palinari chiletifolia. It's better known by its Ebinazi Luganda name. Those who have eaten it say it's delicious. This plant is common in Rakai and West Nile. Yeah, so and another important thing is that the wood from this plant is very good for charcoal. So it is getting also depleted because of its charcoal production. Oil extracted from Ebinazi can also be used for massage. Fruits around um, July, yeah, the fruits are yellow, round of this kind. The flesh is eaten and the seed inside it's hard and it is where you can crack yeah, the oil and get... I think I've eaten that one. Propagating the seedling has been troublesome, but it will be dispatched to the communities as soon as solutions are discovered. We have a forester over there. Oh, the fruit. Oh, there are some. Oh. Even there are some ripe oh fruits. Did you see the monkey? <laughs> Monkeys abound here, and yes, you wow. guessed right. They feast on the ripe fruits. Plants, they coexist with the animals. So for them to survive, they have to depend on the, on the fruits. There is always enough here to trigger an overflow. Take this tree. It has the capacity to produce one succulent yeah. fruit after another. People are free to come and pick the seedlings. They are for sale with just small monies. At no more than a dollar, one will have thousands of fruits in their own backyards to replenish their stock forever. That said, humans are the most dangerous pest to the preserved fields even at this research center. Mm, they still <laughs> even approach fruit trees at a rate that puts the monkeys and birds in the shed. When we are to plant, we plant the seeds and when they eat, they leave out the seeds. So we pick those seeds and the ones we raise. Even the bitter fruits considered poisonous are preserved. They serve a purpose, an ornamental one at that. <laughs> For shed, windbreaks, name it. All fruits in this block except Casnora, the edible fruits. Waswa Mulumba, the Plant Genetic Resources Center director, says the country's diversity has to be protected at whichever cost. For purposes of crop improvement, for purposes of uh, ensuring that our ecosystems are, are healthy and also for ensuring that today and the future has the raw materials which can be used to produce new varieties, which varieties uh, improve our productivity. Yeah, here we have Jambula species. We have this huge, uh, huge one here. This one is called Sizejam kuminae, and then this one, it is Sizejam quinensis. This is indigenous to Uganda. There is a lot more fruit here, including the mouth-watering jackfruit. This has only been possible because of conservation. A major rethink was needed because while once upon a time, one could easily get the fruits out of a forest, mass extinctions abound today. Conservationists, though, 
aren't turning a blind eye as natural habitats continue to be decimated. They are preserving a genetic pool that will help feed future generations. Florence Nalimba, NTV Nature Files. Nature Files was brought to you by WWF with support from UNDP.